What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. I know the last video was quite a bit different. Sorry about that. I know that you guys have been uh, really looking forward to seeing some Carol videos, so I'm gonna try to crank one out today for you. This will be all about Carol's molting process. But first I need to start the video off with chopping up some dead meat, which is uh, pretty standard for a Carol video. It's always so satisfying chopping this stuff up. If you want to get into falconry, you better get used to chopping up meat. It's, it's the middle of summer. It's We're getting close to the end of July now. And uh, so she's in full molt at this point. If you haven't seen my videos before, my name's Max. I make a whole bunch of different types of videos. Some of them are falconry related, but not all of them. But Carol's in a lot of them. I have a whole playlist for falconry specific videos. If you just like the Carol videos, I totally get it. Feel free to still subscribe, but then just watch all falconry videos if you want to do that. Hey, you're welcome to, but you might also like my other videos as well. Hey, puppies. Yo, puppies. Get on out. If you've been following along and you're all up to date with everything, you know that Carol's been molting. I've talked about it a few times, uh, but if you're new to the channel, I'll go ahead and describe it real quick. Molting, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know how snakes have to shed their skin, right? Uh, and, but they do it like once a month. Yes, see that? That, there, that's a snake skin. Yeah? As snakes grow, they need to shed their skin, and so they'll rub up against something and it'll peel off about once a month. I used to own snakes, I used to love working with snakes. Now, so it's similar for birds, but it's not once a month. It's more like once a year. It's not necessarily because the bird is growing much larger every year or anything like that. It's more because feathers get damaged over time. So feathers get damaged over time and you end up with things like this. So you see the tip of it's been broken off. Now that's pretty common with juvenile birds. Their feathers are a little bit softer and they don't take very good care of their feathers. They don't, they're not super mindful of them. And it also has a lot to do with just their overall um, environment that they're living in, their enclosures. And you want to make sure that you give them perches that allow their, allow them to eat somewhere where their tail's not going to be rubbing on the ground. But once you've provided that, if your bird's not doing it, then uh, you might need to come up with better options. Carol at one point kept taking her food to this one spot and like putting her tail into the corner of the barn and was snapping off feathers. That's a bummer. Feathers can be repaired, but it's also awesome that every summer these birds will shed their feathers and grow all new feathers. Wanna come out, huh? So if you've been watching my videos since last fall, you know that I free fly Carol. She's able to be let out, she'll fly away, she'll come back. For the most part, if she's with me, she typically chooses to come back. Now I have a falconry license, gone through all the legal hoops to be able to do this. Um, and it's been such a cool, such a, such a cool experience to be able to learn all this stuff. For right now, for this video, I don't think I'll be free flying Carol. Her weight is up. You want them to shed their feathers and grow new feathers. In order to do that, they need to be extremely well nourished and they, you need to get them fat, get their weight up. Now, if she's fat and her weight's up, this doesn't necessarily mean that she won't come back to me. She typically does. It's just that she's lazier and doesn't really want to. There's no motivation. The food is the motivation. They don't come over here for like a little pet or a pat on the head. They're not parrots. They come in for food. If she's fat, if, she, if she's really heavy, which she is right now, and she goes up into a tree and she doesn't want the food that I'm offering her, I'm just gonna have to sit out here and wait all day long until she does feel motivated enough to come back. And so that's what we want to avoid. So I'll probably keep her on the tether just to keep, just to avoid any of those issues. So we'll go ahead and we'll see if she'll let us into her, her enclosure here. Hi, Carol. Hey, pretty bird. Hi there. I haven't shown you guys the inside of her enclosure too much. Um, as we look around, I'm seeing a lot of feathers on the ground, which is a good sign. Uh, we want Carol's feathers coming out right now so that make room for the new feathers. So Carol is just over a year old. She turned a year in uh, April-ish is kind of what we're expecting. You don't really know for sure, but you can tell by their by their plumage, right? So that's their feathers. So she's a red-tailed hawk, and if you notice, she doesn't have a red tail right now. And that's because she's less than, the, well, that's because she's a year old. Right now, she's shedding those brown tail feathers and she will grow new red tail feathers. And every year they'll become more distinguished and darker red. 
And so I'm really, really looking forward to seeing that deep, dark red color that she'll end up getting. Uh, like I said, we want to make sure that she just stays really well fed and really healthy to make sure that her feathers grow in. Uh, feathers can show signs of stress and malnourishment as they grow out. They'll have these stress lines in them or even like bald patches. And that will uh, show you that the bird's been going through stress. And so we want to make sure we avoid any of that by, by making sure that she's really, really comfortable, well looked after. She's in a nice big environment, but one that she feels safe in and, uh, and is really, really well fed. These here, these are called contour feathers. They make up the overall structure of her body. Obviously birds, if you were to pluck all the feathers off of them, she would be much smaller and frail looking. The contour feathers provide a lot of that structure. Um, they're also flight feathers, so something like this. This, uh, I'm not an expert, but I think this here, yeah, I believe that's a tail feather. These are what provide protection from the elements, protection from predators, and allow them to fly. That's a good girl. A little jumpy today. You want to do a couple more? Build some trust? See, we need to build our trust back up. She's not a huge fan of the camera either. Something about it trips her out. So I'll do a couple of these short flights with her in, in the enclosure, build some trust back up. There, you can see she's already getting better. Oh, so cool. Guys, I can see her first uh, red feathers. Oh, my little girl, you're growing up. Her, her main two train feathers, the two right in the middle of her tail, have fallen out. Growing in are, are some really beautiful dark red feathers coming in. Um, but this is really going to affect her ability to fly. She's not going to want to fly. There's people out there that say that their feathers hurt them and they don't, you know, that's part of why they're moodier. And so I'm definitely going to keep her on the leash uh, or what we call it as a creance. Okay. Because we haven't hunted in a while, she hasn't spent a lot of time just sitting on my fist. Uh, I want to get her used to being with me again. Um, it's, it's really good for her and it's good for me too. It's good for us to spend time together. Uh, I'm not going to try to touch her yet or anything like that. We're just going to go walk around. We'll walk around the property and see what she does. Hopefully, gets, hopefully she just gets used to just hanging out with me. We've had multiple instances out here on this property where the door has been left open and Carol hasn't flown away. I, I've thought about putting in a secondary door. I probably should. I'll probably work on it later, but she seems to be so reliable. I haven't, I haven't really had to do it. Uh, this later this afternoon, I got to continue working on this gazebo project that I'm working on. See, I want her to get used to walking around with me a little bit. So we'll, we'll walk down in the field while I talk a little bit more, let her get used to just walking. Um, so got some pretty cool, exciting news coming up. A month or so ago, I put down a deposit. I put down a deposit to do paramotor school. Um, it's like this contraption that you wear on your back and you have a paragliding wing and you learn to fly. Well, that, that school is coming up in another week or so. And then I also just yesterday uh, purchased the wing and the frame and the harness and the carabiners and all that crap and all I have left to buy is the motor, which I will buy in a couple more weeks. It's a very, very expensive purchase, uh, but I think it'll be really cool. I think this, is, this has been a long time dream. I really like to find things that are just outside of my comfort zone. So things that are life-changing, things like experiences that are like, wow, I can barely picture myself doing that, but I wanna do it. And those are the things that intrigue me. Yeah, nothing lasts forever with these birds. We had a really, really solid relationship when we were hunting. You're okay, pretty. You're okay. It's okay. The whole falconry experience is always changing. It's like a new challenge after a new challenge. You'll make some. You'll you'll uh, you'll make progress in one area and lose it in other areas. This all really started when that other hawk outside started freaking out, and that's uh, that's what caused this um, little stressed out behavior that she's going through. Yeah, I'm really glad that Carol's molting. Her feathers are pretty beat up. She she has some uh, some of her her wing wing feathers are pretty damaged. 
She's definitely broken feathers. I'm not sure why. And her enclosure has perches that keep her from, that should keep her from breaking feathers. So bristle feathers are the ones that are on her beak and kind of next to her nares and under her eyes. They're these really stiff looking sort of hairs. On this feather, you can see right here, this soft fluffy stuff, that's called the down. Now there are some feathers that are just down. This is actually a semi-plume feather. Uh, so it's like a hybrid of down and you know a more full-fledged feather here. So phyloplume are like these hairs. I don't think we'll be able to see them on Carol at all, but they're very hair-like. If you were to like pluck a chicken, they'd be covered in these hairs, and that's what phyloplume is. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. This is a type of contour feather. I'm pretty certain that this is a flight feather, a wing feather. You can see that they have this distinctive shape. There's like this notch here for soaring. Really, really cool. You can tell they're healthy. She doesn't have any lines in her feathers and the stem of them looks nice. You can see that her red tail starting to come in. Isn't that adorable? I'm really glad that she's going through this molt because like right as we moved, she just broke a ton of feathers. I think the move was really stressful for her being in the new enclosure. I think she was batting, like baiting around in there a lot and she did break some feathers. I talked to my sponsor about it and he said it's, it happens, it's kind of difficult to avoid sometimes, but that luckily she's close enough to the, to the molting period that we wouldn't need to uh, mend any of them. Feathers can be mended. Um, my sponsor, uh, he doesn't like to do it, he just lets the bird go and starts over next year. Of course, if it was like right at the height of hunting season, he probably would have ended up mending her her feathers, but I think she'll have a fresh set of brand new feathers come this fall and we'll be able to hunt rabbits right here on our own property. It's super cool to like collect all these feathers. I even put a few in this box here on my wall. Those are like the first five feathers that she lost. I've been really looking forward to this whole process and I'm really, really excited to see some red tail feathers and I'll be even more excited for when they fall out and I can have them. I'm gonna continue working with Carol all day today to just try to get her assimilated with me again and get her feeling safe. Uh, it's sort of a bummer that she's, that, that just wears off so quickly, but it's funny, she's just, she lets me touch her, but she just doesn't wanna hang out on my hand. So it's just, it's weird. Our relationship is always changing. One question that I get a ton online is how do you travel if you're a falconer? Um, basically, it's like three options. You either have to take your bird with you everywhere you go and you have to be careful because you can't just cross state lines with a bird. Uh, some states require you to uh, re request a permit. Some of them it's just like you just have to notify them that you're taking a bird into their state. Um, so that it's kind of complicated. If your trip's like less than a week long, you can have someone that's not a falconer stop by and feed them so long as your enclosure is large enough for them to sort of hop around free fly, get their own water, all those sorts of things. They can't be tethered and then leave them for a week. So we'll, we'll go for a couple nights and someone will come drop food in the food hatch for us. And that's super simple, no problem at all. If you're leaving for a longer period, a time where the bird should definitely get out and be free flown and whatnot during that time period, well then you're gonna have to work something out with another falconer. Uh, a non-falconer can't fly a, a wild caught bird. They have to, you have to have a falconry permit in order to fly your bird. So I can't just have a friend come over and fly Carol. Uh, it has to be a falconer. So those are, those are options. Take your bird with you, have someone stop by and drop her food, or stay with a sponsor or another falconer friend. So I've got some work to do down. I wanna work on the gazebo outside. Uh, I want Carol to just sort of spend some time with me, just watching me, making sure she knows that I'm not gonna do anything, making sure she feels safe both inside and outside. She's obviously a lot more calmer inside, and so I'm pretty sure that the hawk outside is really bothering her. Um, I don't know what to do about that. I'll have to talk to my sponsor, because uh, that's sort of out of our control unless we like trap and relocate that hawk, which I don't think you're supposed to do. We'll hopefully just have her hang out with me outside while I work on that gazebo thing, and uh, maybe she'll just start to relax a little bit. She's definitely not motivated for food at all. It, this whole relationship just takes constant reassurance that she's safe, that she's okay, that I'm not gonna hurt her, I'm not gonna take food from her, 
And you gotta do this all summer long. And this is a big reason why a lot of falconers just let them go um, right at the summertime and they catch a new one in the fall. They train them. It's, they feel it's easier to train a brand new wild caught bird than it is to get a bird through the molt. So getting them through the molt and then back into hunting can sometimes be pretty difficult. Yeah, she's already starting to be a little bit more relaxed. The more we walk around, talk, and just hang out, the better she feels. So what I'm gonna do is sort of find a cool spot for her to chill out uh, while I work on this thing today. Hopefully make some progress on it. I'd like to get it done. It doesn't necessarily fit in this spot here, so I'm gonna try to get it to work. Hopefully it fits, but uh, this is how far I got yesterday and I need to take half of it down and <laughs> fix it. So I'm gonna let Carol just sort of weather right there and watch us. She can sort of get used to being outside while she watches me work, get used to my presence, uh, all the movement and whatnot. Just in general, it's really good for her to be outside. It's good for her to get some sun and it's gonna be really good for her to just sort of be around me while I work and do stuff that's not directly with her, but just sort of in her presence. So we'll let her hang out while I work on some stuff. So it's been a long, hot, but successful day. Carol got lots of time outside. She's doing really well. All I have left to do in the gazebo is hang up these lights and uh, we'll be ready to start grilling out here. Man, I just love it out here so much. We got such a beautiful view. I feel very, very fortunate to be here, guys. It's pretty cool. All right, that is looking good. Man, it feels good to get this done. I've been uh, sitting on this project for a long time now and uh, yeah, I'm glad I was able to get it done and make a video today. It feels like uh, lately all I've been doing is doing installs on the truck or doing trips or just doing business type stuff. So it feels good to do a little project around the house and uh, hang out with Carol. So check this out, got a little special delivery today. Ooh, yeah. I know this is a falconry video, but if you've been following along with the Toyota Tacoma, it's been a long time coming. Finally got a bed slide for it. It's gonna make everything so much better. Sort of part of the plan once I got a topper, I knew I had to get a bed slide. So, so stick around, uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already, especially if you wanna see, uh, well, not just the bed slide install, but more falconry related videos, as well as side-by-side -side related videos, off-road videos, travel videos, farm videos. What else? I don't know, just all sorts of great life stuff. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you were a little bit entertained or inspired or something. Hope there was some sort of value to this video for you. Oh, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Felt great to get some work done. Now I'm gonna go do some living. Get some work done this week, but don't forget to live. Whap. Come on, come. Good boys.